Welcome everybody, I'm Lizzie Brooks and this is Lizzie Brooks Yoga and Fitness. Today's workout is a burn off the sugar holiday workout because let's face it, we, speaking of yours truly as well, might have indulged a little bit and that's okay and that's great. But if that's making us feel a little sluggish, it might be nice to balance out with some movement. So there's gonna be plenty of movement today. Make sure that you take some breaks. I'll offer modifications. Um, go down a level, go up a level, depending on your energy. And um, I also want to invite, obviously I'm <laughs> in my heinous Christmas garb, um, and I also want to invite all holidays into the mix. So let's hang up our menorah for our Jewish friend. And I don't have anything for Kwanzaa, but if you celebrate Kwanzaa, I celebrate you as well. All right, I think we're ready to get moving. Come and join me on your mat. Welcome, so let's warm up our spines. Bring your hands to your legs and just start to circle around, getting into the hips and the spine, shoulders. And you can make this slow or fast and reverse that direction. Starting to get that blood flowing. I already feel a sugar molecule has already burnt off. And then come up to the top, reverse some cat cows, roll the shoulders back, lift the heart. Exhale, round the spine, drape the head. Inhale, roll it up and open, and exhale, round it back. Inhale to neutral, and join me on all fours. <laughs> I've never worked out in a tutu before, so far, I don't know. Take your hands down. If you wanna pad your knees, put a blanket or a towel underneath. We'll do now an all fours cat cow round under. You might use your exhale on this. And then inhale, reverse that back, open the chest. Exhale, round. And inhale back into opening the front of the heart. Come into the all fours position and draw your organs towards your spine. We're gonna start with a little tap back. So you're just gonna tap one set of toes and then the other. Okay, so again, if you need padding under the knees, add that, or you can even fold your mat over a couple of times. Now, the trick here is to not just kind of take the hips side to side, but to keep the pelvis as steady as possible. And then from here, if you want more, come into your plank, not sagging, not downward dog, but right in between, and then we'll do a knee tap forward. Okay, so rather than tapping the toes back, it's a knee tap forward. And again, we're trying to keep the pelvis nice and steady. You can also create this with a knee hover, okay, instead of a knee tap. Choose what you want. Throughout this entire practice, you have a lot of choices. Choose wisely for you. Three, two, and one. Hold the plank or the all fours position. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, we'll stretch back into a child's pose, reaching back, arms forward, lengthen the hips, wiggle a little side to side. Oh my gosh, this is a little, this is a little bit crackling around. I think it might not last much longer. Rise up to all fours, tuck your toes, exhale, downward facing dog, pedal that out, soften the neck. Anytime you have the opportunity to let the neck go and release, take those opportunities. We tend to hold a lot of holiday tension in our necks. And then look to the top of your mat and take your feet there. It might take you a couple steps, no worries. Inhale, rise halfway up. Knees might be really bent as the hamstrings warm up. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees, let your arms and head dangle. Draw your organs, so scoop your belly back. Draw your organs back and roll all the way up until you feel yourself coming into a really nice alignment on all levels. Deep breath in, hands might come to the heart, and shake it out. Okay, so I'm crackling with this bow, I'm, I'm itching, this thing, this thing's got, <laughs> boo, bye, yeah. That doesn't mean I'm not in the holiday spirit, it means um, 
There's a reason we don't practice in a tutu and an itchy sweater. Bring your hands to your waist. We're gonna work those tap backs again. Bend the knees. So the depth of the bend in the knees is up to you. The deeper you take kind of your hips back and the hips down, the more work it'll be. Less, less. Choose where you need to be. We're gonna shift our weight into our left foot and tap our right foot back. And then step forward and switch that. So we're working in a chair pose at the front and a tap back with the legs. If you wanna keep your hands on the waist, you can do that. Hands could come to the heart. Or if you wanna add some reaching forward and elbows draw back, you can. So that looks like reaching forward as the foot comes back, elbows draw in as the foot comes forward. Back and forth through that. And that just gets us a little more into the shoulders and back and a little more blood flow. It's not necessary. Choose the level that works. All right, I can feel that sugar cookie just already starting <laughs> to burn, to burn off. Two, last one. Hold your chair pose, reach your arms forward like you're holding a plate of deliciousness in front of you, invisible deliciousness, <laughs> and offer it out to someone. Maybe the deliciousness is like, I don't know, a, some carrots and celery. <laughs> Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, float the arms down. Roll the shoulders. Get a little bit more into the area of the lungs. And then shake it out. We'll go ahead and step wide with our feet. Not so wide that you feel like you don't have structure underneath you, but wider than your hips for sure. And from here, you're just gonna bend one knee and the other. Just getting into the knee joints a little bit more, lubricating into the hips if they want a little bit more opening, especially through the groin, maybe you take it a little deeper. And then from here, we're gonna do our steps. So you're gonna move your, your weight more over into one side, hands can come to the heart, and step in feet together, okay? Then you're gonna take that off to the side again, shift other side, step in chair, okay? So wide, shift, step, wide shift step. So stay with it, this can be tiny, this can be really little movement where you're not stepping the foot so far. Or you can make it wider to where you actually have more of a stretch in the groin before you step to the other side. Wide, bend, together. Wide, bend, together. One more time each side. Last one. Stand up tall, press the arms back, roll your shoulders onto the back, open the sternum, deep breath in, and shake out the clutter. We're gonna come to the back of the mat here. So take your heels right onto the back of your mat and take your feet closer together. Come into your breathing. Breathing is always number one. And then from here, we're gonna draw the right knee up and then set that right heel right in front of your second toe on the left foot. Shift your weight forward, soften that front knee, other knee comes up, and then right in front of the second toe, set it down. And again, using your drishti, your gaze, can help with this. Knee up, tight wire, shift. Knee up, this is great for your brain. Tight wire shift. Now this one, you can knee up and hold. Maybe you're having your hands as a helper. Maybe you're holding the knee bent. Or you can extend the leg any amount, even if it's extended close to the ground. Then once again, bend the knee, set up your tight wire. Other knee comes up, and you can use a wall. Maybe extension. And tight wire. Okay, keep your tight wire feet, bring your hands to your heart, lift your heels up, working the balance and the calves. If you wanna reach the arms up, absolutely you can. <laughs> Looking away like I just did to look at you guys takes, takes you off balance. And then if you're doing that on one side, float the arms down, switch the feet, and do it on the other. Heels can lift or stay down. Breathing here for the balance. Draw everything to the midline, really working into those calves and the posterior chain, hamstrings and glutes, and lower the heels, lower the arms. You're back at the top of your mat. Let's take a vinyasa, however that looks for you. Inhale, reach up. 
Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step or hop back. Now, you can take this through chaturanga. You can come into an upward dog, or if you went all the way to the ground with your belly, take a cobra maybe. And then we'll join in downward facing dog. Pedal it out there. Let's give our hamstrings a little more love. Actually, stretching burns calories. Um, some people think you, know, you have to do this big hard workout, but actually stretching itself has been proven, science shows, that that's another way to burn calories. And then from here, we'll walk our hands back to our feet, bending the knees. We'll revisit that chair pose. This time the feet are a little wider, so the hips distance are a little wider. Take the arms alongside of the ears or back and then tilt the uh, torso up a little bit here. And then we'll add a march. Now, the feet, as you'll notice, are not coming very far away from the floor, okay? So before we took the leg way up, these are small marches, okay? Bringing in that asymmetrical movement, but not a large range of movement. The arms up will be harder. Hands to heart or back might be a little easier, so choose wisely. If you want more, you go deeper into the bend, shifting the hips a little further back. <laughs> Stay with it. This is like, uh, I'm asking a lot, I realize, <laughs> okay? Five, four, three, two, one. Hold, and then we'll go for that press back again. Shoulders roll back, open the chest, inhale, and shake that on out. Once again, we'll move into a wide-footed stance here. <clears throat> One of my favorite things to do is to add plyometrics or hopping into the workout, but it's not right for everybody. Low back issues, knee issues, you're going to stay with that march aspect. That element of marching is wonderful. You'll still kick that heart rate up. You'll still burn off the sugar. Don't worry about it. If you wanna add some hops, the inhale is here with the arms reaching, and the exhale is hopping to the center, hands to the heart. Bent knees, no matter whether you're hopping in or out, bent knees. Inhale here, exhale center. Inhale, exhale. Open it up, but not too wide, because you don't wanna feel like you're destabilizing. You still want that structure. <laughs> Good. It helps to recognize that this is temporary work, <laughs> and we can do anything for a short period of time, lots of times. So we think we can't, the brain says no, but we've got it. Three, two, last one, hold and center. Optional lift of the heels again, but this time knees bent. If you have knee issues, keep the heels down, please, and decrease the depth of the hips. Wake up your inner thighs just a little bit more. Those adductors, sometimes they fall out of the way. They don't wanna come on board, let them come on board. Lower your heels, inhale, reach up. And exhale, hands to the heart. Deep breath comes in. And let that go. Widen your feet and just send the head around. So sometimes when we're doing those hops, working hard, we tend to hold in the jaw and the neck. We actually really want to make sure we're releasing that. Hang the head down, one vertebra at a time. Let the head come all the way back up and shake it out. We're going to come down to the mat through a vinyasa. Okay, so again, whatever that needs to look like and feel like to you today, as long as it feels safe, you're doing it right. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Walk or, or hop back, and then you do your movements of choice. I have videos that break down how to take a vinyasa and make it less weird. And if you're interested in that, I hope I'll remember to put it in the cards, but it's a very good one even for seasoned people. I think there's a lot of good tips and tricks in there. Deep breath in and big sigh out. Step your left foot a little more in, raise the right leg, and then add a baby circle with the right leg. So <clears throat> you can make this larger as long as you feel like you're not kind of flopping around, but that you're staying more stable in that lower leg and hip. And then you can reverse rotation. You can also do this with a bent knee. It can be teeny tiny and still be impactful. 
And then if it feels good, you can stack the top hip on the other with the knee bent or the leg straight, opening through the right psoas, front of the right hip. And then hug in, 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 in your hanging plank, round your knee to your nose, lift even your ankle to the sitting bone and step through into a lunge. Widening your stance a little bit if you feel like you're too much on a tight wire. We don't wanna be there, we were just there. That's not where we're going now. And then from here, reach your arms back, roll the shoulder blades onto the back, lift your low right belly off of the right thigh and start to increase the activity in the arms by doing little presses here. Root the right big toe ball joint, pinky toe ball joint, and heel down. Stay nice and bent in that right hip as you increase the movement of the arms. If the elbows are bent, see if you can straighten them a little bit more so those triceps are really firing. Three, two, one. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, open your elbows to the sides and down. We're coming back, as always, into that heart opener. Inhale, reach. Exhale, frame your foot with the hands, take it back. And then instead of a vinyasa from here, we're going to do a ankle, excuse me, a wrist, not ankle, this is not your ankle, surprise, and a wrist tap with your knees. So what that means is you're gonna have to move the shoulders forward as the pelvis comes forward because you're all connected. Or this can be a hover where you don't even touch the wrist or the forearm at all. I find that this one, that slight more movement forward changes the work in the belly versus just being here and taking it to the elbow. Little bit lower, little bit more of a shift. This can be done on all fours as well. Three, two, one, downward facing dog or child's pose, maybe rolling the wrist. If you need to get off the wrist at any time, absolutely do. Soften out your neck, locate your breathing. Look to the top of your mat and we're gonna take our feet there. For those of you who want a little hop, walk the feet a little closer together and find a lift and lower of the heels as long as well as a bend in the knees. And then as you're ready, think about taking your pelvis way high up as you hop forward, landing always with bent knees, or you can walk. Inhale, rise halfway up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come all the way to reach and bring your hands back to the heart. Just shake off any clutter here and take a moment to reconnect with your alignment and your breath. Deep breath in and sigh that out, shake that out. Take the feet a little wide and then we'll just draw a circle with the hips before we do the other side. Circling those hips around, you can go as wide with the feet as you want or closer together. Keep the feet this wide for the inhale and the reach up. Exhale, fold. Now sway the hips or the torso or a little bit of both side to side. Take the feet back close in, bring your hands down and we'll step into a downward facing dog position. Again, let go of the neck, but reroute your palms down, put a little bit of a fingerprint down. Walk your right foot in to the midline a bit more, bring the left leg up and here's where we'll start with those circles. Again, maybe a bent knee, maybe a straight leg. Start small, don't go for the largest one at the beginning. You wanna just initiate the body, say here's what we're doing, and reverse rotations. Take your time, if you at any time go, oh, that was too much, bend the knee, make it smaller. And then the option to stack the left hip on top of the right with a straight leg or a bent knee, depending on how that feels for you, breathing. And we'll rotate that left pelvis down, hug the left knee in and up, even the left ankle, hold for a moment, and then step into that low lunge. Widen your stance here, plug the femur heads into the pelvis. <clears throat> Make sure you're feeling nice and steady. 
And then we'll reach back, take the left low belly off of the left thigh, roll the shoulders back. And here we go. We're soaring through the air like Santa's sleigh. <laughs> and the uh, engine is this pump of our arms, as well as our heart, which I'm sure you can feel. It's just like a terrible analogy, but just pretend that never happened. Shh, don't tell anyone. I'm just so glad that I'm not being recorded right now so that no one will ever know. They'll never be the wiser. Keep pumping those arms. Remember, keep them nice and straight. <laughs> Good. Three, two, one. And then inhale, reach the arms up. And exhale, elbows draw back. Open up your heart. Make space for yourself and others. Inhale, reach. Neutralize the spine as you reach. Exhale, frame that foot. Step back into your plank pose. This time we're coming into a side plank. So staggering the front leg in front, excuse me, the top leg in front and making L shapes with the ankles. Option to lower and lift the pelvis, which is really hard. And so if you wanna hold it here or step the front foot forward with a bent knee or the lower leg down, then you'll do that instead. Okay, so the most challenging option will be the lifting and lowering. If you wanna bring your arm into it as you arc hips up, arm might come alongside of the ear, hips down towards the feet. Slow it down so we wanna make sure that you have the support you need through the breath and the body. And then we'll come all the way over into plank and we're going directly into a plank hold and now to the other side. Front legs, excuse me, Top leg stacks in front, not gonna get that right. And maybe a lift and lower, or those modifications of stepping forward or kneeling down. Reaching towards the feet as the hips come down, reaching alongside of the ear as the hips rise up. This is a, <laughs> this is a calorie and sugar burner for sure. And talk about the shoulder work as well, lateral work. Great for so many things. And all the way back into our held plank. Inhale, exhale, child's pose. Now, what you just did prior to this, you had to really stabilize through the core. Let's let the core relax. Roll the wrists around, move the fingers here. So take a pause for a little longer with that because the next options, are gonna kick that heart rate up a little bit more. Stay with me. It doesn't last long at all. But again, super, super effective. So I will walk you through this. I'll show you the modification first, which is also still um, really powerful. So hands come underneath the shoulders and you're just going to tap to the sides. The knees bend, tap right and left. Now, if you don't quite have the strength or flexibility to take the foot alongside of the hand, that's fine, tap to the sides. If you can step all the way up towards the foot, then you might choose that option. The most challenging option is both feet back, both feet back. So the knees bend as you land. Even as I come back into that semi-plank, I'm bending my knees, I'm not hardening them out like that. So remember that you have those three levels. Choose what's right for you. This one is a killer, <laughs> a sugar killer. Three, two, one. Downward dog, breathe. You survived, you thrived. Deep breath in. And let it go. Child's pose once again. And now we will move on to the belly and then the back, and then we're done. <laughs> so if you want padding underneath you for your hips, make sure that you have enough that you're not teeter-tottering forward, but rather the rib cage and the pelvis are on the same level rather than one falling off or back, okay? And we'll come on down <clears throat> for a sphinx pose. So forearms down, fingers spread gently wide, 
And then the feet don't have to be together if that doesn't feel good for the spine. You can go a little wider if you like. Shoulder blades roll onto the back. Spread your toes if you can. Reach your sternum forward and work that posterior chain. Breathing here. It's so critical when we're working the core to remember that the back of us and the spine and the pelvic floor are also core. And then more for the triceps. Last time, <laughs> for, the, for the love of God, the triceps. If you want more, lift the elbows about half an inch off the floor and hug the elbows isometrically towards the midline. Breathing, if you're shaking and quivering, then we're doing the same thing. Three, two, one, and come on down. Take a little rest here. Chin, forehead, side of your head, whatever works for you, find that. Bend your knees and move everything side to side. Let the ankles sway, shins sway. If you wanna make circles with that, whatever directions feel good, whoo, do that. And then from here, I'm going to invite you to take your chin down or your forehead and then bring a little bit of internal rotation to the legs, which means rolling the side of the hip a little closer to the floor. So turning the toes out would be external rotation, turning the toes in is a little more internal rotation. So just finding that more, that feeling of more turning the toes in, but keeping them straight back. It's just the feeling is in the hips. And then from here, ground one leg down, bend one knee. So I'm gonna bend my right knee, and I'm gonna look back and I'm gonna say, okay, that's roughly 90 degrees. And then from here, I'm just going to do the teeniest, eensiest lift and lower while keeping my right, that right hip bone down. So I'm not taking that up. I'm gluing the right hip bone down with that. And then working there. It's a lot of work for that lower posterior chain. And then if you want more, you're going to take that same work up to all fours, but think about gluing the front of your hip down rather than letting it roll out. And if you want a lot more than that, you'll do all of that work from a plank pose. If that bothers your low back, then please come down onto the floor and do it from there or skip it. Three, two, and one. And we'll join in a rest on the belly. Breathing here. Again, if you wanna sway side to side or even shimmy the hips a little side to side, do that. We'll all start down on the ground, even if that's not where we're gonna stay. Rotating, inwardly rotating the hips a bit, bending the left knee. You make sure it's, it's roughly 90 degrees and start to lift and lower. I don't point my toes because that could bring a cramp into the calf muscle. So I normally take an L shape in the ankle and help stabilize the patella, the kneecap a little bit more. So you can stay with that work. That's a lot of work and it really gives you that feeling of, okay, I can root down into the floor and know that my hips staying down or you can take that work up. Now what happens sometimes here is that people collapse their lumbar, but bring that low belly up and in a little bit. Staying here. This can be done with a straight leg too. And then for the final option, plank pose and pressing up. So for some reason, my left, my left butt cheek is much more on fire than my right was. So we probably have those differences from right to left, most of us. Three, two, one. And lower all the way back down. This time, just rest. It's over, that's over. And shake it out. We'll shift back slowly, mindfully into a child's pose. And elongate the spine there. If you wanna add any movement that feels nice, add that. And then from here, as promised, we'll come on to our backs. A little bit more work and then rest. Reaching forward or grabbing the legs, round it down. 
Think about that scoop we did earlier. Scoop out through the organs towards the spine. And then take a full body stretch and wiggle and open in any way that feels good. You might point and flex through the toes, ankles, soles of the feet down and hug the knees in and give yourself a rock side to side. So I think that the next stuff is really fun. <laughs> so play along just a little bit more. Know that when we're doing this, you actually can take the arms underneath you and stabilize at the sacrum a little bit if that feels better for your lumbar. Or just take the arms alongside of you. Reach the legs up. If they don't straighten all the way, don't worry about it. And we're gonna start, this time I'm gonna add a little point in the toes. And we're just going to crisscross one direction the other the whole time, drawing the organs towards the spine and attempting to keep the lower back closer to the floor for this. Also attempting to not hold the tension of this through the neck and the jaw and the shoulders. And then if you wanna make this a little bit bigger, you can, but I would recommend you slow down the speed of the movement. Back and forth. You can play with going into a big reach and a big cross anywhere in between. This really gets into that hip and core connection. And this isn't a movement that we usually do in our day to day, but if you do, like my hat's off to you. <laughs> I know I don't do this in my day to day. And then one more each side. And hug in and rock side to side. Soles of the feet down. Please listen to your body on this one. This is the last thing before we're gonna rest and kind of stretch out. Um, just like when we circled our legs around in Downward Dog, you have the options here to do similar changes. So we're gonna come into a bridge pose, soles of the feet down, anchor the feet, lift the pelvis up. You can scooch your shoulder blades into the point that feels good for you. Hands can be on the belly, down, or interlaced underneath you. Only interlace if the shoulders are really allowing that and it feels fine on the wrists. You're gonna walk the feet just a little closer to the midline and stay here and breathe. They don't have to be touching. That's not the case. I just don't want them way out here. So we're going a little more into more of a straight line from the hip than out. Now, you can stay here or walk the left foot a little closer in, bring the right knee up and start your little circle like we did in downward dog. This is a lot, <laughs> especially because we already worked that posterior chain. We might feel this the next couple of days and reverse that rotation. And of course, if you're feeling like, oh, my low back is great, my knee is great, my hips are great, you can do this with a straight leg. Make sure you're getting both directions. But what you're trying to do is keep the pelvis pretty stable instead of rocking the pelvis, okay? Because that could be hard on the back. Lower that foot down, rise up any amount. Walk the right foot over a little bit, and if you're doing it today, bend the knee in and add your circling. Pelvis as steady as possible. Maybe circle the other direction. You can go into your full legs, and it could be a tiny circle. It could be that you're drawing the teeniest tiny little orb, or it can be bigger, but that's gonna take more stabilization through the hips and the low back. Please choose wisely. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to the bent knee. And then soles of the feet down. Baby lift, maybe a little more. And exhale, coming all the way down. So because of all that glute work, we're gonna stretch that out. Two choices, either cross one knee on top of the other and hug it all in uh, towards the knees, the shins, or the feet. Or you can cross the right ankle, engaging the right ankle to the top of the left knee and put your right arm through the triangle in the middle, interlace in front or behind the left knee. Whichever one feels like it's giving you more benefit, that's where I'd like you to go. So for today, for me, it's that full cross and grabbing the outer feet. The movement is up to you, whether it's just movement of the breath or movement of the whole posture. Whatever you did on this side, do it on the other side, either full cross, hugging in, wherever you can grasp. It might be the outer feet, it might not, or left ankle, 
Hole in the middle is where your arm goes through that triangle and interlace on front or behind of the right knee with your movement. Again, I'm gonna go for more of the Gomukhasana legs, which is, Gomukhasana means, or this is cow face pose, but it's a, very, it's a different variation. It's supine on your back. Um, I'm not really seeing a cow face here, but maybe that's just lack of imagination and creativity, I don't know. And then hug the knees in, happy baby pose, widen the knees, stay here, or lift the feet up like you're squatting on the ceiling, grab shins, ankles, or outer feet. And again, movement, sometimes the nervous system just loves kind of a lackadaisical movement. It sends a message to soften and release and relax. Or you can just hold and breathe and let your breath send that message. And go for your full body stretch once again, like you've never been this tall or elongated before. And if you would like to take a twist, one knee in, cross it to the other side, and take your twist. So I'm bringing my right knee in, crossing over to the left and unfurling my right arm to the right. You might stack the knees, whatever feels right. In invite your breath along for the ride. And come back through and switch sides. Let's see, what do I feel like I burnt off? I had a lot of like <laughs> white flour. <laughs> yeah, and tortillas, not technically, you know, what you think of with Christmas. Maybe some mashed potatoes, noodles, and stuff like that. I've been doing the white flour. Um, you know, it's whatever you're into. I'm more of a salt person. Not that I don't in invite myself to some sugar. And come on in for a hug, and then set yourself up for Shavasana, final relaxation pose. If this isn't comfortable, roll a blanket under the knees, or you could even put the legs on a chair or legs up the wall. And stay here as long as you can, and just have some time where you don't feel obligated. Okay, let me, let me take that back. If you feel obligated to rush up and start going back to your to-do list and go, 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 just recognize that, that's human. Come to your breath. We're gonna go for a five second inhale and a five second exhale. So science shows that a 5.5, we're not gonna get that nitpicky, but a 5.5 second inhale and a 5.5 second exhale is the optimum for bringing your systems, all of them into the balance and giving them um, the most calm so they can function properly and even more efficiently and effectively. So slow it down, attempt to breathe all through the nasal passages if you can, that's also very important. And take five counts in and five counts out. If you're seated and you would rather have some height underneath you, if that makes the seated position more accessible to you, then absolutely add that. I know that I prefer that. Relax the jaw. If you did nothing more than just this breath today, it would be plenty. It would be more than most people do as far as giving their bodies a chance to really heal. If you have not read the book Breath by James Nestor, I highly recommend it. You'll probably hear me talking a lot more about this in the coming videos. Thank you so much for showing up, for inviting movement into your life, especially on the days when you just feel like you really don't wanna, you really don't wanna do it, but you know you should, and then you do it and you're done, and you say, oh, I did that. So my hat is off to you, my Santa hat, and um, I really appreciate you. If you got any value from this video, please, please give me a thumbs up and um, subscribe to the channel. All of it is free, the videos are free, and let me know in the comments what you would like more of. Have a beautiful holiday and be safe and take care of yourself and take care of others. Namaste.